get ready to pull the plug on anything or anyone that is no longer supporting you. This includes releasing old versions of yourself and anything that has officially expired. Because when you change, so does everything else. Hey everyone, it's Christine. Welcome to this video on the full moon lunar eclipse in Libra happening on March 25th at 3 a.m. It's in the morning, Eastern Standard Time or New York City time for reference, wherever you are in the world. Lots of expiration dates popping up, hence the name of this video on the thumbnail. Lots of things will be coming to you if they haven't already, activating especially the Libra energy of your life and calling for you to make changes, to up level, to get up to the next step in your journey. I mean, this could mean releasing old habits, belief systems, people, things, situations, anything that you share and partake your energy with that is no longer helping you grow, that is not assisting you, assisting you, excuse me, in the way that you want, and you feel it's time to move on. This is the start of eclipse season, and we are continuing the story here from the eclipse we had, the solar eclipse, I should say, in Libra on October 14th, 2023. And so we are in the midpoint of this series because they come in pairs, and we have Aries and Libra eclipses happening, which tend to focus on the relationship axis generally, me versus we. If you'd like also additional support navigating eclipse season and to look at some practical guidance, take a look at this video I recently created. And I simply want to also leave you a note, always trust and follow your own internal guidance, your intuition, and what you feel is right for you because everyone is going to have a different say and their own perspective around the eclipse season. Yep. Timestamps are in the description box below. So don't forget to click when you see the video. All times also pertain to Eastern Standard Time or New York City time for reference. I also use whole sign house systems, tropical Western astrology. I am intuitive with astrology, though I also incorporate Hellenistic ancient techniques. The link to this eclipse chart is also link down below in the description box for any of you that would like to look at the transits, especially as they relate to where you currently are located. Okay, let's dive into the astrological energy background. The overall energetic theme here, this is the first eclipse in 2024, but it continues from the previous year's cycle where, where we had the Libra solar eclipse on October 14, 2023, initiate the Libra Aries cycle. And think back about 20 years is when we had this cycle repeat. So you may have similar themes, but of course the energies, the transits, the alignments and aspects were different at that time. So similar themes may come up, especially since the same house is being activated. The next eclipse we will have will be the solar eclipse or also in conjunction with a new moon in Aries on April 8th. So think back about any themes that initiated on October 14th in 2023. And even going back about 20 years or so, when we had the last Aries, Lun excuse me, Libra Aries eclipses. And you'll find similar themes coming up uh, around the Aries and Libra energies of your chart, because it'll highlight what is coming to fruition or culminating, what is ending or shifting or changing in your life, or you're releasing or letting go because there's different elements, different versions that we are aspiring toward and that we're heading toward. I also want to know, always remember any of many of these videos because they do not incorporate every person's individual natal chart. These are collective energies we're speaking to and where these transits are located. So the energies may appear or be felt differently in your own respective chart. And that's really important to note because some folks don't feel any of this. Some folks feel it a lot and some folks feel a mix. So it's going to be a, a different situation for everyone. Also take into account any other transits that you may have in addition to the house that's being activated. For example, Libra or Aries. Some of you may be going through nodal transits, like a nodal return or a reverse nodal return or having any other planets activated in your chart. So there were three major themes that came up for this lunar eclipse in Libra. And the first one is about letting go of the past. 
the moon is the fastest moving luminary that we have or celestial body. And on March 26th, it will conjunct the south node in Libra at 16 degrees and 21 minutes. So this eclipse suggests strongly that there is a major change ending release of some kind, especially with our material fortune. It could be past life or past lives, whether it's in this incarnation or in previous ones. It also centers around memories, remembrances, nostalgia, impermanence, our physical and emotional environment. It could be relating to the material world too, mothers, family and home, women in general, for some pregnancy, travel and the sea, because the moon and the south node both have a tendency to reference the past or past experiences. And with the south node, there's often reference to things that you may have cultivated, things that you may have brought into the world, things that may no longer suit you, and even aspects of yourself that weren't beneficial or optimal that you are getting ready to release or that you have grown. So there's a major focal point with this eclipse in Libra that something is changing so that you can grow. But that means something has to be let go of or released or at least transformed in a way that's going to help you move forward instead of backwards. So we're being guided to make changes on how and where we feel at home, especially within ourselves and with others, since a lot of these energies focus on relation, interpersonal relation, on we versus me and how we maintain ourselves, our identities, our soul expressions amidst the connections that we have. We're also focusing a lot on letting go of patterns and belief systems that do not perpetuate the higher expressions of who we are and what we desire to be, maybe who we desire to be. Because many things that have been illuminated, especially in the Libra Aries area of your life, could indicate patterns with other people in these themes, whether it's career or relationship and marriages or self-identity or family units or your own personal philosophy. There are so many themes that are gonna come up depending on what is being activated for you. But the main point is things that have worked and helped us, perhaps kept us safe, protected us from certain dangers, whether they were imagined or real, they are being broken down, they are dissolving, they're being flushed. And the moon is telling us it's time to move forward and find safety in a new identity, in a new way. And there's a polarizing tension here because it is opposite the sun in Aries. And Libra is the planetary contrariety of Aries. And so there's tension there where Aries wants to find, excuse me, where Libra wants to find harmony and balance and pleasure and avoid conflict. While Aries is somewhat impulsive, ambitious, ready to go ahead and move forward, sometimes at the expense of not thinking of others. But there are so many expressions and significations with each of these planetary energies. And it, it's really important to think about how you can find some type of balance because that's what this lunation is asking you. But it's not about staying in the past. It's not about keeping yourself stuck. And something to note here are any repeated cycles. This, I feel like a broken record at times because many themes that come through to me, whether it's through channeled messages, through tarot or oracle guidance, through astrology or any other form of divination or mortality that I've consulted, they're the same. They've been repeating. If you find yourself in repetitive cycles, whether it's experiencing the same type of jobs or the same type of relationships, whatever it is, it's asking you something. First, pause. Second, why is this repeating? What do you feel the universe is trying to have you learn or look at or focus on in order to better understand because there's some type of lesson or lessons being highlighted for you to say, I'm ready to break away. I'm ready to end this way of being. I'm ready to move on from these types of scenarios, environments, and relationships and events so that I can evolve and move on to situations and to people and more importantly, experiences that are going to feel better, that are going to provide perhaps the enrichment, the joy, the satisfaction that you may seek. So the first theme that I mentioned about letting go, especially to the past, this can be difficult because so many times unconsciously and even subconsciously, we may hold on to things that keep us safe or that may help us connect to some aspect of who we were, like who we were 
when we were younger, who we were when we weren't parents, who we were at different stages of our lives. We may seek to bring back some of those dreams or to fulfill things we didn't or couldn't or were unable to. In the same vein, some of us feel like connecting or staying connected to the past is a way to keep it alive, especially if it surrounds people. And we may perpetuate certain behaviors, beliefs, and patterns, and even situations that keep happening over and over because it's a way to feel closer. So there's a lot of things that are unraveling and that can show you on many multifaceted levels, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, even in the physical reality about what is happening, what is being shown to you, and what it is that you need to let go of so that you can move forward. I keep getting a image of a leash. You know, for any of you that may have pets that you walk on a leash, usually we do that to keep the dog, generally it's a dog, but it can be any animal that has a leash, to keep them safe, to make sure that they don't run off. And also when we walk, generally many dogs or animals are on leashes. But I keep seeing there's a tug. If you keep something on the leash forever, it doesn't have the ability to move forward, to move around. There's something about its freedom, its autonomy that's hindered, that's cut off. So there's no growth. Eventually what happens? If it's something living, like an animal, it'll emaciate, it may wither away, it destabilizes energetically and it could die. And so I say this broadly and energetically, releasing the past could mean bringing up things you may not want to experience or feel. Finally, gaining acceptance, because acceptance is key when we release the past, because we don't ever forget the past. You may move forward in life, you may make progress, you may continue to accomplish your goals, keep moving in a way that is helping you grow and to accelerate your growth in a way that propels you forward as you continue learning and navigating, not truncating, not stagnating. And sometimes we think if we let go or we release something, whether it's a material object or something energetic, like a connection or a cord to someone, we think it'll be severed forever, but we don't forget. Something to remember with the moon is that it is in charge of our past recollections, our collective memories, our individual memories, remembrances and nostalgia. We don't ever forget. We always remember. But anything that is not helping us anymore to grow, anything that is keeping us subjugated, leashed, or truncated in a way where we can't move or there's no freedom, or that's not allowing us to bloom or sprout in our own authentic ways, this is being highlighted with this lunation to release. No more of that because it's not going to help you in the way that you want. The scales here with Libra are being asked it's time to find balance or to be rebalanced in a way that we are leaning towards the future and moving forward and not towards the past anymore. Not trying to make progress by moving forward in the present towards the future with elements or old versions of ourselves from the past. It's akin, the best way to explain this is if you're wanting to live a healthy lifestyle, but you're still maintaining and doing or engaging in habits that the old version of you did that led to the unhealthy lifestyle that you want to move away from. So there's a huge emphasis here on re-identification or shifting that identity, which can take time. And there's elements of grief, of acceptance, of denial, and perhaps processing through those five or even six stages of grief, as many folks are familiar with. Because when you change who you are around relationships, around your profession or anything in life, you have to first deal with letting that part of you go and perhaps become aware of it and then accept that this is no longer who you are and allow yourself that time, that process to transition. It's almost like moving too. For any folks that have moved, it's not always easy where you just move and you pick back up and everything continues on. There's a period of acclimation when you move, especially if you're moving to an brand new environment, a new geographic unit, like a new state, a new country, a new city, a new town, new schools, new job. There's a period of taking time to integrate, to get your, what is it, your results, your feels, your bearings, right? 
to figure out, okay, here's the market, here's the cafeteria. And this is what's happening with a lot of our identities. We're in the midst of massive transformations. And I'll just say this is just the beginning with these series of eclipses that are priming us for even more down the line. I would say in about two years, we're being asked to release a lot of who we once were, but no longer identify as who we once were, but those versions are not helping us or serving us in the way that we want them to. Or they're clinging on to idealism or ideals or some type of version we have in our head that we hope will come to fruition that is not going to happen in the way that we want. So there's a lot of shifting here and leaning into a lot of discomfort and finding safety and security in the new and the redefinition of who we are, especially when it comes around changing in general collectively with these energies, the relationship access, how we used to act with people, what we used to put up with, what, what or who we allowed in our vicinity, in our energetic bubble. All of these elements are coming up and pinging at you because you will start to realize as you continue on your own spiritual journey, as you continue to do your own inner work, your healing, as you unpack a lot of that conditioning and those layers, you are changing. And just like I said in the introduction of this video, when you change, everything changes around you. Everything starts up here with your mindset. And naturally, as you change and as you shift, especially when it comes to your identity, the people that you used to hang around with, the things that you would tolerate, the jobs you did, etc. So many life themes. Just think of all the different areas of life, perhaps in reference to the astrological or zodiacal wheel. But in general, think about themes that are important to you because when you change, many of those things change. Remember, too, that Libra has both expressions of Venus and Saturn because Venus is in its domicile, or I would say co-domicile with Libra and Taurus, and Saturn is exalted in Libra. So this eclipse is turbocharging endings and releases, almost as if the universe is saying, okay, that's it. We're going to expedite this really quickly and press this turbocharge button so that you can accelerate forward. And a lot of these themes, I feel they're not new to people. I feel like they've been pinging at you perhaps up to a year in advance. And I say this because for myself, and I know I'm not the only one, I tend to feel many of these energies months in advance and things start happening in my material reality to reflect that, especially on the current themes about relationships and relating, self-expression, identity, etc. And so pay attention to themes that have come up, especially in the Libra Aries axis of your life especially around relationships, your identity and expression, boundaries, autonomy, and protecting and safeguarding those. Because more than likely, those are going to be areas that are activated. And they're always, think about them like onion layers. These onion layers, or this onion, you just keep removing them, right? And eventually, you come to a point where you feel comfortable and you operate in these new versions of yourself. But many of these onion layers entail practice. It's as if you're learning to drive. Most folks don't learn to drive in a day. You go through iterations or different sessions of practicing, making mistakes, parking on the curb or the grass, and then realizing, okay, I have to move a certain way. It's like that with a lot of these lessons we're going through. So anything that's keeping you stuck, that's keeping or having some type of hold on you, this eclipse is going to sever that. So again, maybe you need to establish routines that are beneficial for you that are going to lead to more optimized health, better sleep, better eating, more energy, whatever it is. I'm giving just examples because this is going to activate different areas of everyone's life. And that's not going to mean or have the same impact for everyone. But it's simply noting to you, anything that's not working, anything that's been on repeat, like a broken record or when a cassette player just the button doesn't move <laughs> or anything, you're like, you know what? I've been in this cycle for a long time and I'm ready to finally address it and release it and do something new. These are things that are being asked to change, to be released, let go of, perhaps updated, revised, more importantly, transformed. And it's the energy underlying all of this. Saturn here wants us to grow, wants us to boss up in a responsible way. In other words, mature, adult. <laughs> Stay the course, but also Saturn represents time. Time is up here. Lessons have been learned. Your situation or relationship with certain events, people, 
Maybe it's time for you to move on to a new set of lessons. The universe is urging all of us. It's time to let go of this because a new cycle is trying to push us forward. The second theme has to do with changing how you show up in relationships. And many of these themes I've already touched upon, so there's overlap in some of the themes that I'm highlighting here. But collectively, the Libra Aries energy focuses on relationships with self or who you are as the individual, as a native, versus others, other people. It could be your significant other, your spouse, other relationships, friendships, other environments or contractual obligations you engage in, etc. With the North Node and Chiron conjunct together, and obviously the Sun and other planets as they enter Aries will also start to conjunct as we move through the season, there's massive healing happening within relationships here and has been for quite some time but it's also allowing us to separate from others in a healthier way as we start realizing things that we thought were healthy or that were working they're starting to ping and pop up we're starting to see threads unravel or fray or break apart if you've noticed some relationships that you thought were tight that you thought were long or maybe strengthened by longevity, you may start seeing things where, wait, the foundation wasn't really there or there's cracks there that need to be addressed. Because just because I'm mentioning this doesn't mean when I say release, doesn't mean everything or everyone is going, see you later and they're leaving and they're going down the drain. This calls for transforming these connections, our belief systems and the way that we are working within these relationship containers. So some relationships, in some areas of our life, you can improve and optimize in different ways. In others, you have to completely demolish things and release and clean the slate and start over. And this is really important as we continue moving forward because there's been a major emphasis, especially with the last nodal transits with Taurus and Scorpio, on building a stronger foundation that's akin and aligned to our value systems. That's why now with relationships, many relationships that have expired have done so. When I say expired, it means you may have grown apart. There may be issues, drama, situations popping up where you're like, wow, my friend, my spouse, my work, my boss, whoever, problems are occurring now. And they're showing you something. They're telling you something. And sometimes these are things that can be resolved, but it has to happen in unison because relationships are not a one-way street. And if it's only one person doing the work, especially the person trying to do the work of another, it's not going to work, it'll collapse. So we are ungluing ourselves from the way we were, how we operated in relationships. That's changing big time here. And the people we generally shared our energies with, there's a huge shift now in remaining empowered and authentic to who we are and not muting ourselves, not keeping ourselves invisible or hidden or acquiescing or appeasing people just for the sake of being nice, being seen a certain way, being quiet. Apologies for the water interruption with my dogs. <laughs> and most importantly here, we're seeking to operate in reciprocal connections that offer us the same types of energetic exchanges that we offer another. And these issues that I've been mentioning and anything that seems like it's a challenge or things are not working out, they're highlighting to you themes that have probably come up before and they're pinging at you, okay, this needs to be addressed. Something is repeating over and over. And I'm going to give you a prime example because I've started feeling these energies at the beginning of 2023, around February. And I'll just tell you my own relationship group when it comes to like friendships and community of support dissolved really, really quickly. The folks that I thought I could lean on, it just felt like they evaporated. I'm like, well, what happened to them? Where'd they go? And it wasn't until a few months because I was during that time amidst preparing for a big move and just really stressed out at that time, trying to get that into place. And it wasn't until a few months later that I recognized I know why this happened because the nodal points were still in Taurus Scorpio. And in July, mid-July, they switched to Aries Libra. And I realized the way that I was showing up was not the way other people were showing up for me. And there was a dis an incongruency and I had a tendency in my own journey to hold on. And I'm just giving you an example here. There's, this is one of many, but as soon as 
not the universe, literally just everything, circumstances happen where things just fell apart. And it wasn't anything conflictual or dramatic. It just felt like, poof, it went away. I was able to realize what happened. Same thing, fast forward, last fall, 2023, with the first eclipse in October of 2023 in Libra. And I was part of this community. It was a professional, entrepreneurial type of community. And I was not connecting to anyone. I was just experiencing a lot of flaky people, people that weren't following up. It was just a very frustrating experience. And what the values, excuse me, the values mentioned and delineated did not align to the action I was seeing. And something that I've always tended to do was hold on and keep trying and hang it out and see things through. In other words, complete them. This time, I left. Midway through this, uh, it was like a mentoring type program. I left. I withdrew. I asked for my profile to be deleted. I completely disengaged. And I finally realized that I needed to learn how to walk away. Like completely walk away and not put up with breadcrumbs from people. So I mentioned this to share a little bit about myself, to lean into vulnerability, but also, like, you know, you're going to also probably have light bulb moments where you're like, shit, certain friend groups or certain romantic relationships or experiences you're having with people or different situations in these areas of life or Libra and Aries traverse, you're going to see similar repeating things happening. And it's, again, it's really important not to judge yourself because I almost, I'm like, what? But to hold space in a, as best as you can, non-judgmental way and ask yourself, what is happening here? Because when you do realize what it is that's going on and why certain things are repeating, because you're part of the equation too, just like I was, I realized I needed to change something to change the output, not something I've said before. So that's something just to clue you in here about changing how you show up in relationships. If you're finding that certain situations are repeating and you're finding the same outcomes or experiencing the same shit or seeing the same people in different bodies, the same energies, in other words, you got to ask yourself, and this is not about putting yourself with blame or blaming yourself or putting or posing any judgment toward yourself, but asking, okay, part of this equation too, what's going on here? What can I do differently? Maybe set a boundary, maybe learn to honor my values, walk away, not put up with behavior that doesn't meet my personal expectations around X, Y, Z, or communicate, whatever it is, something is being asked to come to your awareness so that you can optimize. In other words, experience more fulfilling relationships and situations, but you have to be aware of this first. And that's what the Nation is asking us to do. We're also working towards more empowered expressions of ourselves, which I've mentioned, which naturally means we will relate, excuse me, which naturally means how we relate will change because when we start realizing what it is we no longer deserve, want, or want to put up with in relationships, we're not going to put up with it. That's it. We're not going to give people 10 more centimeters of room to continue doing BS or engaging in BS. We're not going to allow certain people to treat us in a certain way or engage in situations in work environments, school environments, or whatever it is. And a lot of these energies are asking us to level up and to honor ourselves. The Aries energy is about honoring who you are, taking risks on yourself, taking chances, especially when you feel that fear. And you're going to feel it when you're doing something new and when you're changing anything, especially the mechanics of interpersonal relation, communing, with, communing or communicating with others, and also navigating new paths forward. Whenever you're about to do something new, you know the feeling when you start anything new or you go to a new school? a new job, or you move to a new place, there's always those, that feeling of butterflies. And you're like, oh, I've never been to this market. I've never been to this school. But slowly you acclimate and you get used to that situation and you get comfortable. That's why change, it helps keep the spark alive. It helps us get used to changes and gain confidence and trust in ourselves. So take stock of your preferences in relationships in general, but also your boundaries, what you allow or what you find or how do I word this what you allow into your own energetic bubble what you find to be permissible in other words and take note of how things have shifted especially within the last year how have your relationships shifted how have you shifted as a person and also in relationship to others 
What do you no longer put up with? And what do you deeply desire now? Because all of these questions are going to allow you to really figure out, this is where I want to go. Do the current circumstances or energies in my life meet this? If not, you have your answer there. And that's why there's perhaps that grief and that nostalgia that this moon in Libra is bringing up because we're about to release something that we may have once cared about, loved deeply. There may be cherished long memories. We may have had previous and, or multiple experiences in these situations, whether it's a job or another person, like a relationship. Again, whatever it is, there's an attachment here, a longing, an emotional, I should say, and also a secure attachment, a security, I should say, not in terms of attachment styles. And so I want to be honest here. I do see separations and breakups and divorces and divisions in relationships, but I don't feel like it's anything new. I don't feel like it's, oh, surprise. I feel like many of this people have felt and it's been stirring and fomenting for months, if not years, because you know when the foundation is cracked and you haven't addressed it or done anything to change it in a relationship, and this is a two-party thing, right? Things eventually burst. They come out. Seams unravel, right? It's like making a purse and you sew it, but you didn't really secure it with a thread that was thick or it wasn't reinforced, and you're putting in a lot of shit in that bag. And then the bag breaks. And similar things are happening with relationships in general, collectively, but also in situations, whether it contains ascribing to other people's belief systems or staying silent when you want to speak out or allowing people to walk all over your boundaries and not speak up about them. It's going to activate different areas of your life. So these schisms are growing with this lunation and you're going to see, I feel like most people already know, this isn't a surprise, you guys. Most people are not surprised generally with, oh, this is going to end. Most people already feel this energetically and they know I'm not really content here. I'm not fulfilled. I don't feel like I can grow anymore at this job, going to this school, living in this home, being in this relationship. And I think it's time to go. So this eclipse is asking you if these, if these differences, but also ways you've grown can be reconciled so that you can continue growing or if it's time for you to go in a separate way. The moon in Libra makes a superior trying to Pluto and Aquarius. So it's asking us not just big, not to make just big, but also huge changes here. And obviously with Pluto and Aquarius just having ingressed in, in mid-January, this is just the beginning of that transit, of that cycle. So I feel like we're getting a ping here. And we've already gotten some highlights with Pluto and Aquarius for about the last two months or so. So there's cleaning up energy as well with the moon in Libra. Because remember, the moon values peace, harmony, love, I would say idealism, romance, not having a lot of chaos or drama involved. There's also a deep desire for a deep emotional, intellectual bonding or connection here. So relationship landscapes, I feel, are going to vastly change with this lunation where you're letting go of folks that maybe have kept you or you've maintained superficial connections, where you've just held on to people. Maybe for nostalgic reasons, maybe they were family, friends, maybe you've known them for a long time, maybe they represented something to you in the past, in your past life, growing up earlier, different stages of your life, or they represented something different when you were a different version of yourself. So there's a lot of energies that are shifting rapidly with this air energy. And you want to be able to express yourself who you are authentically unabatedly, unabashedly, but also very openly, especially with Pluto and Aquarius and with the moon in Libra. So that's why I kept channeling and seeing a lot of schisms, divisions, and breakups going and breakages, I'll say, almost like an iceberg breaking off a glacier. And it's not bad. I don't think these things are bad. It's relative, but I do feel like many people already know these aren't surprises. You may also be experiencing a lot of it's time to talk discussions, a lot of schisms, a lot of fights, drama, things being highlighted and pinged, almost like fireworks are going off, especially in interpersonal relationships, platonic or romantic, that are asking you, and also maybe increasing your frustration and different types of emotions that are coming up. What can you control? 
Have you communicated your feelings? Have things changed? And where do you want to go from here? Because ultimately you have a voice and that's your sense of empowerment here on how you wish to continue and how you wish to operate in that relationship. Finally, the third theme here, take action towards your dream. With Aries, it doesn't need to be said. We have the sun in Aries, but because this lunation is predominantly focused on Libra energy, and then we have the next solar eclipse on April 8th, which is a total eclipse, this is going to also initiate some of these changes that I mentioned. So the sun in Aries in this eclipse is offering us this passionate push towards realizing our dreams. So that's why I mentioned about letting go of the past, especially when it comes to romanticizing or idealizing something that we want to see in our current realities, but it's not happening in the way that we want. And it can mean, again, simply transforming that or saying, you know what, I'm letting this go and I'm going to do things differently to go after my dreams or what it is that I want. A lot of dreams may be coming back to you, the sleep dreams, the ones where you go to bed and you're dreaming, but also dreams, hopes, wishes, and desires from the past, things that you couldn't or weren't able to do, things that you forgot about, things that were sidelined or put on pause for so many reasons. Maybe you took time out of the workforce or yeah, the workforce. So maybe you were a parent. Maybe you were a caretaker. Maybe you had to completely change your plans to take care of your basic needs. So many things have come up where many times we have to pivot and navigate and deal with changes in our lives and sometimes put our goals and dreams to the side and say, you know what, not now, but one day. So be on the lookout psychically and intuitively for messages and that however you receive your messages to start taking stock of what has been coming up for you. Some of you may get this ping back in the relationships that you're in. Also, this nodal transit with Aries and Libra has been shaking up how we maintain our personal expression, our vitality, our life force and soul essence without allowing ourselves to be compromised by others. And there's a lot of unlearning that's happening with these energies and with the Libra energy of realizing, wow, this worked for me at a point in my life. Perhaps I needed to go through that to learn what it is that I don't want, what it is that I value and where, where it is that I do desire to go. Because the sun in Aries is asking us, it's time to go, go, go. And much faster than what I just said and how I said it. <laughs> Aries doesn't vacillate or wait like Libra does. Libra can be more indulgent in a way, especially since it's Venusian ruled or Venus ruled. It can be one that likes to luxuriate, that likes to feel. Taurus more so than Libra is more intellectual. And I should say it's just an air sign that's more mental. Both are intellectual in different ways. And so the energies here are asking us, let's go. We need to keep moving forward. So it's time to solidify who you are outwardly in the external expression of Aries. And this can mean a lot of different things to people because Libra energies can represent our comforts, safety, and what we may use to be or do with this lunation, I'll say, with this lunar eclipse. And the, and, excuse me, and the Aries energies represent the new. The bold, perhaps there's fear there because we may be asked to do things solo, independent, or in new ways that means stretching our comfort zones and leaving people, places, and things behind energetically, but also physically so that we can continue on our path forward. So in general, you guys, I anticipate a lot of changes with folks and I got messages particularly around careers or professions or what it is that you are currently doing with your energy self-expression, identity shifts, especially because some people are going to become parents, have children or pet parents, like have animals. Some people are going to become empty nesters or retire or enter the workforce, leave school, graduate, et cetera. So there's a lot of exploration and themes around who we are solo and with others. Let's take a look at a few transits. I'm linking the weekly energy forecast for March 18th through the 24th, somewhere around here, if you want to look at some of the other surrounding energetic alignments with this lunation. But I really want to dive in to specific ones because overall we have generally supportive energy. And I feel like it's helping us recognize like, you know, when you're going through a process of grief or realizing, you know what, I have to change something in my life if I want to realize my dreams, my goals, and the direction that I want to go in. 
it's not always easy. Sometimes it means, okay, I got to give up maybe my favorite ice cream for now and learn to incorporate it in ways that are more optimal or maybe not eat pizza every day. Or maybe get up a little bit earlier so I can have some me time if you have children, whatever it is. And I'm just getting a bunch of examples here. There's a lot of energies here that are asking us, okay, we're going to support you and do this. But first you have to accept and acknowledge something needs to be released or transformed. So we have a Pisces stellium and whole sign houses here with Mars, Saturn, Venus, and Neptune in Pisces. And then we have Aries having just entered the sun on the 19th of March, which initiated the spring equinox. And then we have Mercury, the North Node, and Chiron. So overall, this isn't a usual Aries season. And we may not completely understand or be able to solidify what it is that we are heading towards yet, although we're getting illumination little by little because it's ruler, Mars is in Pisces. So right now we're still receiving a lot of psychic and intuitive downloads and messages. That's something to be aware of. And we're being asked to lean into that because what it is we're seeking answers to, they're not gonna come from the outside, they're gonna come from within. And that's super important to say that. And I know I sound like a broken record because in many lunations that I've done, videos on the full and new moons and also the weekly energy forecast. This has been something that I've probably repeated ad nauseum, but it's important right now, write down, take note of, record these messages, glimpses, pings. You can call them coincidences, things that are inspiring, things that keep coming back because these themes are pinging at you in different ways. It's almost like the universe dropping different puzzles. And you're seeing, okay, I see a flower here, I see a bird, I see another tree, I see water. Maybe there's an emphasis here on nature. So there's something here about encompassing that. We have the sun in Aries sextiling Pluto and Aquarius. So there's massive support here for profound transformations. And we're going to see this play out because Pluto and Aquarius is not going to go away in a week. It'll be here after around, what is it, November 2024. It'll be here for the next... 20 years. So this area of your life is undergoing a deep excavation akin to an archaeological dig where you are digging out fossils. Fears may be coming up. Things that you didn't think about are coming up and being resurfaced so that you can perhaps acknowledge them, heal them, release them, transmute them in, in different ways. But there's an energy here of regeneration because I kept seeing a starfish growing its arms, its arms or legs. And there's a point here of Feeling revived again, feeling renewed, especially if you felt stuck or stagnant or like your life force was draining, like you had no energy. So there's a revitalization happening and a lot of this has to do with cleaning up our lives in different areas, physical environments, but also very much energetically. Pluto and Aquarius together with the sun in Aries, they're both pushing us to move forward towards bigger, bolder and fresh new ways in very different ways. And I mean, especially with the Aquarian energy, it's very much about, again, tapping into things that you may not have even done before and doing things in a new way. There's an avant-garde kind of style with Aquarius, especially wherever it's transiting, the Aquarius area of your life. And with Aries, this is about going after your dreams, your goals, and starting that step forward. So that's why I said I feel like there's going to be many people that are going to be breaking away from old situations, institutions, entities, peoples, energies that no longer represent who they are anymore because Pluto and Aquarius is going to really shift that. Solely think of it as gears turning. It's going to transform who you are profoundly. And again, I've mentioned this throughout this video, major and intuitive psychic, major intuitive and psychic guidance are coming forth, especially around your deepest desires and how you wish to transform your identity to support these goals. Finally, we have Venus in Pisces sextiling Taurus and Jupiter. So this is about making your dreams of reality. And there's mutual reception between these two, right? Venus co-rules Taurus and Jupiter is the traditional ruler of Pisces. And so there's a lot of supportive energy here that's allowing you to go towards the steps of perhaps creating this new version of yourself, but also consolidating who you are, actualizing these steps and the processes because Aries is a fire element and it's like a spark. It goes like that. It's asking you to take action. 
It's not to be a huge ass step, right? You wanna go back to school? Start exploring online different programs. It doesn't mean you have to graduate in, in, a, in a week, right? So there's a lot of uplifting and cooperative energies with these two that highlight to literally tap into your dreams and goals and wishes. Your psychic messages and intuitive nuggets, they are also communicating with you on these dreams and goals. That's why it's confluence of energy. It's communicating together and simultaneously. And it's about starting to bring this into reality. So think about what you've been dreaming about lately. Think about what you're being called to start building, where you want to take that first step. Because you may start feeling alive and the Aries energy is activating you because wherever you feel that aliveness, that passion, that zest, that, oh, I'm coming back into being, I'm coming back into my soul essence, that's going to clue you in on what change you want to make or what you want to integrate into your life moving forward. I'll also say other themes that are relevant here pertain to Venus and Jupiter because they share similar significations as Venus generally deals with the day-to-day -day and Jupiter more of the macro overarching themes. So relationships, especially with women, but relationships in general, friendships, love, pleasures, and joy because both Venus and Jupiter love to have a good time in different ways. Higher wisdom and knowledge and there's a general sense of learning travel and anything foreign, expansion and opportunities. And also with Jupiter, there's themes relating to ethics, religion, spirituality. It could also deal with divination, occult, astrology. And we have a lot of themes supporting this. So some of you may find that you're able to connect to your spiritual team and to these psychic and intuitive downloads that you're receiving through some other modalities. Maybe it's through traveling, through pilgrimages, by communing with nature, joining a circle, learning different modalities, whatever it is. There's a letting go of putting your desires last here or on the sidelines and starting to refocus on yourself. Okay, let's dive into the Sabian symbol for Libra at six degrees. A person watches their ideals taking a concrete form before their inner vision. So Sabian symbols are stories relating to the energies of each degree of the zodiacal wheel. So here the symbol is one of the few Sabian symbols that speaks directly to the idea of law of attraction. So as a person imagined, so does their out outer reality take shape and bring to them what they are imagining. In your life, you'll find vivid examples of thoughts manifesting as things. Other times they may happen without you realizing it. Ideals are not only brought, bought into the light of reality, but they are put to the test. This shows the ability to be able to visualize your thoughts and feelings, and it's possible to project your creative ideas out into the real world. What you think will happen can happen. Other themes also revolve around confrontation with objectives, meditations and affirmations, the need to be careful of what's wanted, writing and being published, designs and plans, the secret builders, being dissatisfied with what was thought to be the ideal not being careful of what you ask for. Neurosis, focusing on the negative, thereby bringing the negative. So the takeaway here from the Sabian symbol and the energies underlying this lunar eclipse, full moon in Libra, your thoughts really create reality, but it's also speaking to a mindset shift and realizing that you can actually change a lot of your experiences by bringing into your awareness and to your focus of what is not working for you anymore. First, get clarity, what do you want? And then second, is what you want in your life at that moment. Because when you take a look at the differences, the distance between those two, you'll start to see certain things, again, like I mentioned before, repetitive cycles or patterns coming up. And realizing that there's a lesson or series of lessons within each that it Saturn especially is wanting you to say, I can do this. I can move toward this growth. I can take aim, commitment, discipline, responsibility to achieve this, to overcome this, and to move forward. So there's a lot of Venusian support here to help you create and grow what it is that you truly desire. But you notice the themes, and I want to say this. When we don't have clarity in our lives, it's kind of easy for things to be in a wishy-washy way, to meander, to feel as if we're lost. 
as soon as we realize and figure out what it is we want, which naturally can come from looking at what we, we don't want, especially from our current circumstances or even past experiences, it enables us to create some type of plan that we can start creating many steps to go towards. There will be no channeled messages for the eclipses on March 25th and April 8th, simply because of the energies involved, which is why I went a little bit deeper on the energetic themes that came up. Okay, guys, let's get started with the all signs from Aries to Pisces. We are going to look at all these signs and see where the full moon lunar eclipse is going to be activated, what area of life for you. I'm using whole sign house system, and I highly encourage you to look at your rising sign because if you look at your sun and moon, you may not have it in the first house, which is where the ascendant is and how I'm reading this and the planetary transits and configurations at the current moment. So something to be aware of. You can still get general themes, but it's going to be very general. Second, I'm looking down because I have each chart for every uh, rising sign here, and I have not figured out how to put it on to the slides yet. <laughs> It's coming, you guys, but trying to get this out there as fast as possible for you all. Also, just know many of these events, they're themes that I'm mentioning of changes you can generally expect in these areas of life. But eclipses tend to be faded events, so this isn't about controlling or trying to figure things out. Aries, this full moon lunar eclipse is activating your seventh house of partnerships, of relationships. Spouses are significant other that you are married to or engaged in or with. It could be sex, sexual relationship too, contracts, business partnerships, lawsuits, conflict, and open enemies. So there could be endings, changes, any transformations around this. Perhaps a balancing because of the opposition here and either a letting go and releasing from some of these themes or a re- transformation, reformulation, and reinvigoration saying we need to change some things in order to continue growing this relationship container. So there could be endings like I mentioned, but remember every ending can be a new beginning. So you may end one way of being in relationship to others where you're like, you know what, we got to change things up. We got to do things differently. I'm ready to elevate in a new way. You ready to grow with me? especially when the moon conjuncts the south node the next day after the eclipse on March 26th and further on because the eclipse energies will be unraveling. So it's not just one day, okay? You have Pluto in your 11th house of Aquarius of allies, friends, benefactors, and it has, it's formed a sextile to the sun in the first house. So there's something about bringing support here toward your goals and dreams, perhaps from powerful folks and people in your network that are going to highlight your visibility, who you are, maybe amplify what it is you do and allow yourself to get this new way of being out into the world. So some of you tapping into your network, you could be bringing in or attracting new folks that are going to uplift you, that are going to want to support and help you and help you realize what it is you're going after. Pluto also forms a trine to your seventh house. So any folks leaving or any partnerships that are dissolving or transforming will be replaced by fresh energies fast. I feel that right away. I also say when I, when I mentioned any folks that are dissolving, sometimes relationships contribute many different elements to different facets of who we are. So if you had a friend that you like to go out with, for example, that may all of a sudden transform with another relationship. And so I'm trying to give an example here. So you're evolving big time, especially with the sun, or as the sun in Aries approaches the North Node in Chiron in a conjunction later this month. So there's an, ele an overall uh, leveling up and elevation in your relationships. And I feel like there's a deeper emotional connection or bonding that many of you are wanting to solidify especially those that will support your businesses, the general relationships or foundations with partners, significant others, spouses, friends, and your overall hopes and dreams. This is life-changing for those of you that may have this eclipse happening in close proximity to the degrees. You have Venus in the 12th house here, sextiling Jupiter in the second house. So we have mutual reception. So you can bring in more support from females, other women, friendships, folks in foreign lands or in other cultures. 
to your income wealth and material resources. So again, focus on relationships shifting and changing, but I see positive influences here happening for Aries where you're going to start connecting to new folks that are going to impact your relationships in general. So new energies coming in, you're going to form and connect to deeper bonds. You can say almost soul bonds, especially with Pluto in the 11th house. And then bring in folks that are going to support the way that you earn your money and your material resources. Later in the week, Venus sextile, sextiles Uranus in the second house, which again could bring in unexpected income blessings. For some, it could be love to something unusual. Okay, Taurus, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your sixth house of work, labor, selfless service. Some say maybe volunteer work, self-sacrifice, health, illness, sickness, conflict, pets, and small animals. So there's a shift coming and releasing anything laborious, difficult, maybe even karmic here, especially with these themes and focusing more on solitude, introspection, wellness, health, or at least trying to optimize this area of your life. Tapping into the unconscious and self-limiting beliefs, which I feel it has to do more with digging into your spiritual beliefs. It could be psychological work, therapy as well, but spending time doing a lot of introspective digging, perhaps undigging and learning. Pluto in the 10th house, trying to your sixth house. So there's a deeply transformative change that's going to happen around how you work or pursue alternative or non-traditional forms of healing or energy practices, especially as it connects to your health and well-being. Some of you may consult different ways to optimize your overall health, well-being, the way you feel, your energy levels by pursuing other modalities, especially it could be Venusian themes, but with Pluto and Aquarius, these could be different perhaps gadgets, techniques that omit or send some kind of energy or frequency to you, maybe different forms of technology. Again, they have a lot of different monitors people use, almost like pedometers and things like that. But I also feel like it's going to be different forms of healing, maybe telepathic types of healing or different therapies having to do with touch, like massage, water therapies, etc. There's something about trying something that you haven't that could be optimal for that area of your life. I also feel like there's going to be changes in your material fortune and money happening as well. And you could be, some of you could be releasing a job that no longer suits you. Even though we have a trine to Pluto, I feel like many of you are shifting and evolving what it is, how you identify what it is you may want to do and what it is you currently are putting all that energy towards that may not feel like it's fulfilling or bringing you the results or satisfaction that you desire. With Venus in the 11th house, sextiling Jupiter in your first house, you could also receive some support and positive blessings around your dreams and hopes. Again, powerful allies and friends here that could uplift you, help you out, and you can lean on these folks in order to be seen. Okay, Gemini. This full moon lunar eclipse is happening happening, excuse me, in your fifth house of pleasures of joy, entertainment, gambling, risk taking, good fortune, creativity, gifts, sex, romance, for some pregnancy and children. And I kept channeling a lot of things around either children or changes in what it is that you find interest in or enjoyment. I kept seeing children moving out of the home or changing phases, like growing up in different ways. So that means the level of responsibility you have may change as a result, like going from a toddler to the next stage or one entering high school, etc. You may also, during this transit, this is for some of you, decide whether or not to have children and make that decision. Some of you are changing up your interests and what you find pleasure and enjoyment and also seeking to transform this in a way that you haven't done so before. So that may mean for some of you actually starting to enjoy things or learning about what brings you joy. And some of you, you're changing things up because the things that used to bring you joy and enjoy enjoyment in general no longer do. 
there's also some energies here. Some of you are going to be maybe ending relationships, people you're dating that may not be as fulfilling as you thought or not going in the direction that you want. Same thing, I see a positive infusion of material wealth here as well. There's a general focus here on changing up this area of your life and connecting with people that can support you as it relates back to these interests. So some of you, the people that are coming in through your network, because you have Aries in your 11th house, will naturally transform some of these fifth house energies. Pluto in the ninth house trines the fifth house, meaning it could bring opportunities for expansion, like travel, learning new things, exploring your belief systems, returning back to school. For some of you, this could be going abroad or dealing with people from other cultures or even seeing things from a more multicultural perspective. There's a lot of variety coming up with fifth and 11th house elements. Venus and Pisces is sextiling Jupiter in the 12th house. So this could bring, again, more support from foreign lands or people from other cultures, learning or going abroad or studying abroad, or taking some type of long distance or virtual course, because a lot of this has some solitary energy. Taking a pilgrimage or a sabbatical that'll support your professional or profession, career, or main direction in life is also being highlighted. Something key here that may be highlighted is investing in your networks, allies, friends, especially benefactors or patrons that can help support you, uplift you, and help you reach or connect to your dreams, especially as, as it relates to your overall goal in life, like your career, your profession. profession. Okay, Cancers, this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your fourth house of home, where you live, your ancestry, your roots, parents, origins, ancestral homeland. This is also the area of the occult, mystical experiences, divination, astrology as well. So some of you are going to be moving and changing homes, especially with the moon here. Some of you may be leaving home, like leaving your family unit, going home, especially if you're finishing school, graduating school, or whatever season of life you're in, you're leaving a home or your family home. Some of you are going to be moving in general and changing where you live and the environments you change because it may no longer suit you in the way that it used to. And you may simply be looking for an energetic shift or shake up. Something about the energies of the home. Some of you may be uh, wanting to consult like feng shui or anything that focuses on placement or energy with chi or qi in your home environments. Some too, I get estrangement energy. Though with the eighth house trine from Pluto, I feel like there's going to be, again, like I keep getting like an archaeological excava excavation and a transformation happening in this area of life. So some of you are going to really change up your home environment in a way that supports perhaps your professional life, your more outwardly or visible expression of who you are. So there's something about moving here. Some of you are going to relocate for work jobs or to be closer, maybe to father, father figures or caretakers. I also feel like some of you may be moving in general to sunnier places. <laughs> Tropical. Venus in the ninth house sextiles, Jupiter in the 11th here. So some of you could find friendships with females, also romantic love from folks in your network. I think your wider network, social activism or community groups like that, people that support you and your dreams and goals and those that uplift you. So look or be on the lookout for any opportunities surrounding travel, learning, returning back to school, exploring your belief systems or worldviews, engaging with others from diverse backgrounds and exploring spiritual themes, which is Huge because on the fourth house axis, we also have astrology, occult, and divination. I'll say too, with the sun in your 10th house, this is about letting go of the past and what's tying you down. Hence the need, there could be a change in the home environment that's going to support the 10th house energies here. And there's a focus here on your ambition, your reputation, and overall profession, direction, and life. So continue paying attention. I feel like sleep dreams, like when you go to sleep and the, you dream at night, those are going to also provide messages. Pay attention to any messages around 
uh, however you receive your psychic intuitive messages, because I feel like they're going to provide clues that are going to support your 10th house goals. And that is going to uh, be more expressed with the solar eclipse and Aries energy. Leo, this full moon solar eclipse, excuse me, this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your third house of communication, daily environment, routines, habits, neighborhood, siblings and relatives, travel, and this could be short distance or long distance, anything having to do with foreign cultures, foreign people, early education, social media platforms uh, like YouTube, TikTok, any of those, um, Instagram, things like that, divination and dreams. So something cool for you guys is the moon has her join the third house. So this could also lend to material changes in these themes, but also support, even though there's a releasing energy going on here. And the sun in the ninth house has his joy also too, prompting major exploration around your belief system, spirituality, the occult, divination, learning wisdom, publishing, broadcasting, traveling, and exploring, also highlighting anything foreign, cultures, foreign people, foreign places, destinations. So if any of you, because I have to say this, because the transit obviously in the first house of Leo, there's nothing right now transiting. But if any of you have any planetary bodies or the sun or moon in your first house, this has the potential to make a trine to the transit sun in the ninth house by helping to support your changing identity here, self-expression, vitality, and provide clarity around your goals, your ambitions, and even your career life direction. Pluto in the seventh house trines at your third house moon. So again, this suggests new partnerships. It could be for some folks, marriage, contracts, especially around your local environment, can lend big support and opportunities for growth and expansion here. Venus in the 8th house, sextiles Jupiter in the 10th. So this could bring, again, greater stability and opportunities from other people's resources. It could help reconcile or at least heal fears and anxieties or grief. And there's opportunities, too, for, for investment or inheritances with this, because, again, Venus can denote money as can Jupiter. Okay. Virgo, this full moon solar eclipse, excuse me, Virgo, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your second house of wealth, finances, income, or how you make your money, your livelihood, your material possessions, values, property, and what you do in terms of your occupation. So there's going to be changes in the area, in this area of your life, especially with the moon here, because she also signifies many of these themes. And Venus in the seventh house, sextiles Jupiter in the ninth house. So this could bring love. I got that right away. For any of you looking for love, it could be friendship too. It doesn't have to be romantic. But love from afar, from another culture, from abroad, maybe even starting virtual. But I get here a lot of spiritual divine connection. So something that could start off as friendships, evolve into love, or there's a deepening here of this connection with your existing relationships in terms of expanding your mind, learning, exploring, traveling to new places. So some of you, this could overlap. So any of you that are going on any particular adventures, voyages, starting a new course of study, maybe higher education, or even exploring to places of spiritual religious worship, you could also meet other like-minded souls here. There's a strong emphasis on healing, any fears, any anxieties, any griefs, a lot of psychological patterns and beliefs are here as well, especially around shared resources and commitments. Because I something that I intuitively got was a fear for some of you about joining up with someone else. It could be in a platonic, like a business sense, but it could also be in a marriage, romantic partnership type of way. So there's an emotional vulnerability aspect here. There's also themes around getting comfortable or even exploring the concept or concepts around death, the unknown, and any challenges around those themes. You may experience or receive investments or inheritances and even some positive 
uh, what are they called? Like lawsuits. You know those class action lawsuits where they'll notify you. They're like, yeah, the chicken leg you brought back in 2000, it's being recalled, and this is part of a class action lawsuit. Fill out this claim. <coughs> Pardon me. Fill out this claim, and you can get I don't know twenty dollars back. Some of those situations may come up where you are receiving this, especially with the Aries North Node passing through the eighth house for you guys. Libra, this full moon lunar eclipse in Libra is happening in your first house of self, identity, self-expression, vitality, physical appearance, your body, your health, your overall character, personality, persona. So alongside Aries, you guys are the main stars of this eclipse. And there's general themes here with this lunar eclipse around changing or releasing a past version of your identity, of who you are, who you were. And this could mean changing the way you dress or look, completely adopting a new persona or style, gaining weight, losing weight, focusing or taking care of your health or changing something there that is going to shift the health, wellness aspect of your life. Also your identity. How do you identify? What do you call yourself? Because I kept channeling a lot of shifts in identity as parents, mothers, could be fathers too, and that's shifting. And that's fill in the blank, whatever you identify with. Take extra care during this time, especially since the South Node is transiting uh, Libra, your first house, and also because of the moon, because the moon represents the physical body, and there's an energy here of releasing, of letting go. So some of you may be feeling extra tired, <laughs> maybe feeling drained, and it's important to to really take care of your energy and your health in general because you may be more susceptible to simply getting sick. The sun is in Aries in your seventh house. So there's a lot of changes as you shift your identity and as you're letting go of an old version of you, that means your relationships are naturally shifting. So you are going to be attracting a lot of new energies with this new persona that you're in. So pay attention to the types of people that have been entering and leaving your life because that's going to clue you in on some of these partnerships that can develop, whether it's romantic or platonic. I feel like, again, something that's been reverberated throughout this video, but for you all, it's important to know you're letting go of some aspect of yourself here. And this can be very much internal or and or also external, like I mentioned, with appearance and changing who you are so it aligns to who you feel inside. Pluto in the fifth house is training your first house. So there's something about exploring new ways of pleasure, joy, fun, love, and romance that's really going to help you. And that may connect to re-envisioning or reimagining this identity. For example, if some of you have taken an interest in, we'll say, reading more, Maybe some of you want to change up how you look in terms of feeling comfortable. If you want to read in public at a library or at a bookstore, maybe you're changing the way you dress or the way you express yourself. Maybe you're wanting to connect with people that also communicate around certain topics around books like book clubs. Super quick example that I'm just providing here. But I feel like as you learn, because I know for Libras there's been a lot of transits that have been a little bit difficult around finding joy and pleasure again, this is going to activate your sense of self and really reinvigorate you on a whole new degree. There's also a big theme around children here, especially in the first house with the moon because the moon signifies pregnancy, birth as well in the fifth house here, which is trining your first house. Remember Pluto's in the fifth in Aquarius. Some of you may be planning, thinking about having children, maybe pregnant at this time, or you may be watching your kids grow or they're simply changing and shifting into different phases of life. Some of you are becoming empty nesters and some of you are deciding against kids. Some of you too, your creative passions in general, pleasures and what you find joy in, they're going to become your, your kids. In other words, where you're putting all your energy and attention to. Venus in the sixth house also forms a sextile to Jupiter in the eighth. So there could be ease here in the area of work, labor. This is an area of working hard and uh, really putting in a lot of energy towards what may seem like mindless tasks sometimes. But your overall work environment 
You may gain support here from friends, friendships, females in particular, shared resources from others that could alleviate some strain or shift the weight or the amount of energy that you're putting in here. In other words, you could receive unexpected, maybe an inheritance, some type of investment, support from others, whether it could be child support, especially with Venus and Jupiter significations, it could be alimony, some type of other money that you're receiving from someone else that could alleviate the amount of work that you're having to put into the sixth house. Scorpios, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 12th house of the hidden, solitary, unconscious, self-sabotage and limiting patterns, solitude, imprisonment, confinement, foreign countries, and anything having to do with foreign people. It could be also the house of injuries, accidents, sickness, challenges, hidden enemies, livestock, and large animals, sometimes too psychological, spiritual themes. One sec. So... A lot of these energies tend to be more introspective and there's a release here happening perhaps around any elements that have lent to any undoing any self-sabotage any escapism or addiction and there's a, a deep spiritual and psychological transformation as you let go of perhaps wanting to be invisible hidden or in seclusion of some sort maybe more alone or not being seen in some way, staying behind the scenes or holding yourself back. There's also an element here of wellness because of the 12th, 6th house access. I feel like with the sun in the 6th house, some of you are going to be regaining more vitality, more clarity, more energy, putting in the work toward optimizing your well-being, your health in new ways. So this can mean changing what you do in terms of your job, your work, your service, so that it aligns more in ways that support your health. It could be your spiritual beliefs, but also in ways that don't, don't allow you to hinder or hold yourself back. Some of you, because of these energies here, may be coming home from abroad, and that can be relative. You could be moving from one country to the next, or leaving a home, or moving from a home. And I also see a greater visibility here where you're going out and to be seen. So some of you may be wanting to volunteer, work with others. Uh, so there's more of a communal, I would say active energy around here. But it's not for everyone, you all, because there's a lot of folks tied into this. Pluto in the fourth house is trining your 12th house. So there's, again, changes in your home or family life that could be happening. There could be moves here. Some of you are moving abroad or coming home from abroad or just changing the locations. There's also an opportunity to deepen emotional connections and nurturance here in different ways, especially if you've taken time to do your own inner work, to take care of things that may have been holding you back, ways that you may have held yourself back, because 12th house is about how you may have held yourself back in many ways as well. With Venus in the fifth house, uh, she has her joy in the fifth house, and she sextiles Jupiter in the seventh house of good fortune. So expect you can see good things around love, partnerships, Venusian themes in general, so pleasures, joys, Luxuries, things that you enjoy sensory wise. It could be friendships, relationships, and love in general. An expansion of this happening. Also, business. Okay, Sagittarius, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of powerful friendships, allies, patrons, benefactors, those that support and uplift you. It could be groups, communities, and social movements. Hopes, wishes, dreams, good things, and things that generally improve or get better over time. So you're revamping this area of life or something is changing here in terms of who you can lean on, who you feel can support you, especially in connection towards achieving your goals, dreams, and hopes. 
letting go of maybe some of these areas where you're like, no, I'm changing what I what it is that I want to do and replacing them with new ones. Because sometimes as you infuse and get new people into your network, this can shift what it is that you want to pursue or accomplish. The sun in the fifth house is also calling you to activate new ways to enjoy the things that you do, pleasures, entertainment. It could be a gambling or risk-taking, pursuing romance, love. Also, this is the house of top, uh, excuse me, the house of fer fertility, children, more so children, having children, being pregnant, entertainment, and sex, having fun. Venus in the fourth house, sextiles, Jupiter in the sixth house. So you can expect support from females, mother or mother figures, but also changes to your home life with perhaps new decor. Some of you may want to redecorate, change up your home, especially for those of you that work from home. I kept getting work from home opportunities. Some of you may be shifting the way in where you work. So if you work outside of the home, you may be working in the home or you may be changing how and where you work within the home and optimizing that area because I see an enhancement happening here. One that feels perhaps more beautiful to you. You may feel more connected on a sensory level and also expansion. Some of you could be increasing or widening your office space. And I feel like with Uranus in the sixth house, there's a potential for unexpected opportunities to come in that could allow you to change your work environment. Again, because of the sextile, I feel like some of you may end up working from home or finding something that's a different type of work position than you're used to working. Okay, Capricorn, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 10th house of career profession. The main direction or where you're putting your energy in, what you want to do or are currently doing right now, and your ambitions, your achievements, reputation, and your overall visibility in the world. So these are some changes that you can expect with this lunar eclipse in Libra. There's also, I see a balance here because it opposes your fourth house. So there's a need to balance your work, home life, your professional life with your personal life. And perhaps there's changes coming here with how much time and energy that you dedicate to your career or being out in the world in terms of visibility and what you dedicate towards your ambitions and your reputations will also rebalancing or finding greater balance with your home commitment because with the sun here there's an amplification of energy of perhaps releasing tendencies of maybe especially with Libra in the 10th working too much or seeking a different environment that allows there to be greater flexibility in terms of how you allocate your time your energy and creating something more stable feel like some of you may shift to work from home environments. You may move to a new home or location that offers better support for what you do. But also for your career, some of you may be moving for work in general. And when I say work, remember, take it in terms of where you are in the season of your life. If you're still going to school, your main visibility in the world could be being seen as a student. Same thing for those of you not in the workforce. Some of you may be work at home parents, or you may excuse me, not work at home parents. You may be that too, but you may be stay at home parents. So that is your main career right now, your job, which is just as important. It's just a different transition and phase that we all experience in life. I also feel like, again, changes to your home. So some of you may be moving, which could shift your career because we have the node, south node and the moon in the 10th house. And it's, that's a releasing energy. So there could be moves in your physical environment, some of you are moving for work or moving for family to be closer to either or, or both, and changing to your material resources as a result. Some of you could have family moving in as well, an expansion, maybe a father, father figure moving in with the son in the fourth house or older members of your family as well. I also feel with Venus in the third house, sextile and Jupiter in the fifth house, there's expansion here around children, <laughs> siblings, family, or relatives in general. So you may have family moving in closer to you, like neighborhood-wise, or moving in the same community or town, or you're moving. Some of you are expanding your family to add. So if you have children, you may be adding siblings for them or planning more around this theme. 
there's also an energy here of pursuing things that are more fun, entertainment, pleasure, or that bring these energies in your local environment and exploring this rather than exploring far away. But this is relative because either access could indicate long distance travel as well. There's a greater connection. Some of you are deciding with this full moon to reprioritize perhaps your values around family and work and wanting to connect more to folks that feel like family and close friends. Pluto in your second house is trining your 10th house. So positive changes to your income and wealth that I see here as well. Remember, there's for every ending, there's a new beginning. So with eclipses, especially lunar eclipse, there's some type of release or ending or change. But it, that means also new things are starting. So I, I see some of you may bring in new income streams that are different but that support better work-life balance. That's a big theme that came out. Overall, I get the energy of it's time to enjoy life and to do it in a different way where it's not just focused on doing things that are only about making money or about only your career or profession. There's a balanced energy coming through. Aquarius, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your ninth house of higher education, knowledge, wisdom, religion, general spirituality, publishing and broadcasting, astronomy, science, occult, divination, astrology. It could be also dreams, like when you go to sleep, those type of dreams. Travel or anything related to foreign cultures, foreign people, and generally being away from the home, like taking any pilgrimages, etc. So this lunation, it's really highlighting for you that it's time to create routines closer to home and get to know your neighborhood. And a lot of the themes from the ninth house are similar to the themes in the third house. And some of you may be coming back home if you've been away, because there's a lot of energies about movement and travel here. And there could be potential changes around uh relocating or changing homes or locations where you're at now, especially if it was one that was transitory or it was not permanent, especially if you're learning or in school. And also expansion in terms of exploring things maybe that are virtual. It could be courses, uh, study that is local to you, maybe like a local college, workshops, communities, events at the library, there's a greater connection to people too in your local environment and wanting to expand that as well. Some of the um, areas that are also coming up here are dealing with folks from other cultures closer to home and expanding yourself in these ways. So you may interact with folks that come from different walks of life, that offer diverse viewpoints, that also offer you to relate to them from a multivaried perspective. This also impacts your daily environment, your habits, your routines, communication, travel, any foreign, I call it stuff, but foreign people, cultures, lands, and occult themes are also key here. Venus in the sixth house, sextiles Jupiter in the fourth. So there's a potential opportunity to dive deeper on these themes because many of the themes I mentioned already overlap with these Venusian and Jupiterian themes. But I feel like you can integrate them in ways where some of you can create maybe your own business at home or bring in income, especially with Venus in the second and Jupiter in the fourth. That could allow you to create something from what you've learned in the mast, especially if some of you have been studying or traveling abroad. And with the third house energy focus, some of you may be creating like uh, podcasts, YouTube channels, different social media channels like Instagram, TikTok, et cetera, or even blogs, because there's an expression wanting to come through here. Pisces, this full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your eighth house. Fear, grief, anxiety, shared resources with others or your spouse or partner. You could also deal with debts, trials or lawsuits, uh, other people's money in general, inheritances or investments, and topics around death, it could be metaphorical and also other related matters as obviously inheritances generally come from someone that has passed on. 
I feel like there's intense psychological transformation happening and a release of fear, perhaps fear of change in the unknown, especially with the moon here in the eighth house conjoined closely to the south node. And very soon it'll conjunct the south node in, I think, the next day on the 26th of March, the next day after the eclipse. So some of you may be letting go of an income stream that comes from someone else that has supported you. And this could be child support, alimony, some type of reoccurring payment, maybe from a previous lawsuit or a settlement of some sort. I do feel like some of you may also receive this. It's just going to depend on many factors in your own charts too. I also feel like there's going to be an intense psychological transformation around shedding fears related to these themes that I've mentioned, like fears in general, uh, anxieties, grief, death process, and simply endings in general. Metaphorically, when something is dead, it's done, right? Something has ended, so we are letting go. Vulnerabilities as well, and anything around commitment or shared resources, like not being afraid of going all in with someone, whether it's a roommate or a spouse. The sun in the second house also is releasing reliance on others. And perhaps there could be a wrapping up of final funds left from, again, like I mentioned, investments, shared resources. It could be an inheritance. You could be winding down on some of these funds and being guided toward self-reliance now. Like, hey, it's time to think of ways to bring in other income streams for yourself, especially with the sun in Aries, trying new things. And because Aries rules your second house, some of you take a look at where Mars, the planet, is in your chart. And also it'll depend too on any aspects because that could clue you in on how you can bring in other income streams. With Pluto in the 12th house, sextiling the sun in the second house, you could also receive support in terms of money, like material support and resources from foreign lands, from folks from other countries, working with people from other countries, and working with people one-on-one -on -one or in solitary environments or with maybe hidden or vulnerable populations here. Especially in Aquarius, this could be people that are ostracized, could be youth, youth from a segmented or a certain population or group, maybe like a therapy environment, hospital, imprisonment, some type of counseling. And also there's an emphasis here too on taking care of your health and wealth, excuse me, health and well-being. And I was going to say health is wealth and I just mixed that up. Some of you may benefit too, uh, from connecting to any, because uh, with the eighth house that was activated, anything around fear, um, grief, and relating that to any ways that you may have tried to avoid feeling that or escape that, or even induce some form of self-sabotage that may have hindered that. I feel like this Pluto sextile sun will support this healing process or elements to reconcile this. Venus in the first house, sextiling Jupiter in the third house could also bring opportunities around your more local environment, your neighborhood, siblings, dealing with issues around communication, writing, publishing, the internet in general, and communications on different platforms like social media. And also, you could bring in income through these ways, but also about things that you deeply care about, especially relating to yourself with Venus in the first house, things that you enjoy, things that you find pleasure in, but that you also deeply care about. So this goes into perhaps uh, particular issues or populations that you generally care about helping or making a difference. And it could relate to religious, foreign, or spiritual organizations or populations. And anything you want to potentially help around, uh, help bring attention to around a particular cause. You all, I hope, this collective and these individual readings have helped. Remember, these are very general and just to give you insights, the best way to navigate eclipses is to lean into 
what makes you feel safe and secure. And I, again, I did a video about this and it's really tapping in to how you can best lean into uncertainty. And it's gonna be different for everyone. Leaning into faith, perhaps connecting to your spiritual team, which is something I noted. And that's gonna be really important because of the amount of psychic and intuitive messages we're getting. Take a look at any of these videos to help you on your journey. Otherwise, I'm wishing you a beautiful first eclipse for 2024. I'll see you soon.